section 1.1 data cleansing so as you can see I already typed out a few things but you pretty much always use these libraries so a quick way of doing this once you have um, Anaconda set up so you need to actually uh, Conda install every um, library in here so pretty much you will go into terminal if it's uh, Mac then you can just click on this terminal and then just waiting, uh, you can actually pretty much put conda install of the individual. Like I already have the library, so I don't want to do it, but like you can actually just do conda install of say pandas, um, and then you will install it. Uh, um, it's gonna say you already have it, but this is how you can actually do this um, installation using Anaconda uh, for individual libraries. It says uh, solving environment, don't worry too much about that. So after that, you can actually get some message. But uh, the first thing definitely is Pandas. Pandas um, library is very, very popular um, in Python. So it, allow you, uh, it allows you to manipulate data in a data, fo uh, data frame format. So pretty much it's pretty close to Excel, right? Think of it as Excel. You can have this like, grid format of the data and uh, yeah, you can see that here is pretty much like it exists or so no no need to do anything uh, so then It's very useful uh, whenever you have a CSV you have a text uh, you have a, a, um, Any text data or any file that you save locally you can load it to pandas data frame and then manipulate your data there so the second library you can see is Seaborn so Seaborn is another very popular library that you can use to uh, do pretty charts. So you can plot very uh, like different uh, visualizations and charts using Seaborn, and it's very easy to use, user friendly. NumPy is another one that's very popular. So it's NumPy. It's not NumPy. It's NumPy. And then um, I will say I always use NumPy just because. It allows you to do this we call it this concept of broadcasting so you have uh, an empire array and then you can broadcast it so that it will really help the runtime meaning you can apply a logic to every element in this NumPy um, array and then it runs a lot faster and then it's very easy to for you to manipulate um, the data or the NumPy arrays um, so it allows you to pretty much like do data manipulation easily. But here today, I'm not going to be using it. I just wanted to have a quick introduction of NumPy, but uh, today we're not going to be using NumPy. And then the last one is Matplotlib, uh, PyPlot. So this is another very popular library that you can use for visualizations. So as you can see, that it's very easy to like import anything. Right? Once you have the conda install, like you install everything, you just pretty much do it. import. Uh, any libraries that you want pandas as PD and then all these things and then write out and then pretty much I always copy and paste this part because you always you'll use all these libraries so and then uh, Notice this as so pretty much I have as pandas as PD. This is um, think of as a sh shortcut or a nickname of this library So you don't have to always write out pandas whenever you're trying to call this library you don't have to write out the entire name which you'll give it like you know pd dot something right as opposed to pandas dot something so that's why people always want to use this asterisk like pd uh like shortcut uh alias sorry um pd sns mp all these things okay so then last thing is a percentage matplotlib in lightest just to say that i want to um, this is actually a, a, a trick in the Jupyter Notebook. I want to show the plots in line, meaning like I want to show the plots in my notebook. Um, you know, I always have these things, so, um, you, you know, it's best for you to just remember it and then copy paste it pretty much every time you will use these things. So let's say we are going to, um, you know, have some fun. So let's say we have this data set right um, it's it's saved in CSV it's called single family home values this is actually coming from Zillow right so it's a uh, Zillow which is like a public um, with you can actually get this from their their website as well so uh, it's a public data set so Zillow is um, um, uh, an app that you can use to 
um, when you try to actually buy a house, you can actually look at the stats of each house and the histories and also the estimated uh, value for each house. And then I actually got this uh, data, say I'm just going to go in here. Uh, okay. Um, I have all these. So you can actually, I'm just going to open up the CSV. So I download this uh, CSV from Zillow's website and then, you know, it has many columns, of course. It's just a CSV file, right? You can actually see, you know, a lot of columns, a lot of rows. I want to just, you know, make, do something with this data set and then find out maybe there's some useful insights that, you know, I can use for my projects. So say, you know, the way that you can load this, right? I mean, I already typed it out, but like the, the way that you can load any data, right? Typically in CSV or uh, text data is really just like you can do, you always want to assign this to a variable that's called df, but df is equal to pd. Remember, pd is our pandas dot read CSV of this uh, file name, right? So I would have typed it so like you can actually see Whenever you are in the right directory, which in this one, we have this IPython notebook sitting in the same place as this um, CSV file, right? So whenever you are in the right directory, you can just like auto tap it, right? So that it will auto fill everything for you. So then you can actually say, okay, I'm going to, so remember this like sharp, this thing is actually comment. So you can actually write anything, right? So comment, this is how you can actually write comment. So, or, so add things that you want so that you can follow later or someone else can follow you or code later. So now, and then the way that you can actually uh, use this Drupal notebook is you can actually delete it from here, right? So you can see this delete button, you can delete this. Or if you want to um, add more, then you can just like click on plus. And the way that you can run this is really uh, in Mac is shift return. So shift return, or you can just click on this thing. Uh, uh, you can then click on run. Uh, actually, don't use this. So yeah, like this, we'll actually run it. Uh, run the selected cell, you can actually run this. But I always just do shift and return. So it's a lot easier. And then you can see whenever it's run, there's a number to it. So this will tell you this is the 48th cell uh, run in this notebook and then you can run it and then just run it. So the easy, so now it looks like it's been, this data set has been saved as DF. It's called DF. Um, you almost want, always want to use this variable called DF because it's a data frame. So let's say df.head, which is very, very, very uh, useful. You can always, you always use this. So df.head will tell you the top two rules in this data frame. So you can see all these columns, pretty much same as what we had right before. Uh, not this one, sorry. Um, in, you know, in our CSV, I closed it, but like in our CSV, we had the same thing, right? You can actually change this to say 10. I don't want to do just to 10, I can still do 10, right? So this is how you can actually look at it. Just a quick preview, so to speak. And then, okay, so I have all these columns, I have all these, you know, numbers, data, it's great. So at least I have a format that I can, you know, start uh, using. So which is saved in a data uh, frame format. So you can actually, there's a, another way that you can look at the type of this DF. It's gonna say pandas core frame data frame. So it's a data frame, right? So, all right, so now we have that. And then let's clean this thing a little bit. Um, okay, so another thing that's very useful, I already wrote here, but it's df.shape, right? So Shape is telling you how many, this is the number of rows, this is the number of columns, right? So in this data set, we have 15,000 rows and then 18 columns, a lot of columns, a lot of rows. So it's, a, you know, definitely a big data set. Um, and then the other one that's very useful, I always use is, it's called df.info. So info is another function. Notice the parentheses, right? So whenever you have this parentheses in Python, that means it's a function, it's a name function. Why can I, why, the reason I can use this function is because this function is coming from pandas, right? It's a pandas embedded function, innate function. And then because I have saved my data set, my CSV as a pandas data frame, I can use all these functions that are embedded in you know, pandas. So, which is great, right? So I mean, that's another reason that we want to use pandas. Um, um, data frame. 